I've got a few PCBs I need to build over the next few weeks. So I went out and bought the cheapest Amazon toaster oven I could find. And I had one parameter really that I needed to fulfill. It needed to be as small as possible because there's not a lot of space here in the shed. And this is a, uh, well, nine litre toaster oven and it's just got one element at the top and one element at the bottom um, it says over here it will go up to 230 degrees and it's got a 30 minute timer on it not that i'll be needing to go anything like that length of time it claimed in the listing on amazon it was a 650 watt toaster oven uh, which i thought would probably be okay um, but actually, well, let's have a look at the back. But on opening the box and uh, looking at the back, it actually says it's an 800 watt oven, which has some positives and some negatives. Firstly, the positives, well, it should get up to temperature a bit quicker. And I have done a couple of test runs uh, using a thermocouple attached to a multimeter. And uh, it does get up to temperature and possibly not as fast as I'd like. So 650 watts would definitely have not been enough. 800 watts, I think it probably is just enough. Uh, but it does mean, unfortunately, I can't run this on the inverters here in the shed. And that's what I was hoping to do, have a solar-powered reflow oven. But, uh, yeah, sadly, um, that's not going to happen currently on my current inverters. But as I mentioned, I have done a couple of test flows. And you can see we've got some resistors up here, some capacitors, uh, and some SOT23, whatever they are, in this uh, demo board. And I've been using this to actually test. And I've done two or three flows and included a 555 timer there as well. So, uh, yeah, this seemed to flow quite nicely. It seems to have done a reasonable job, does my little cheap oven. Although those manual practice runs seem to have gone pretty well, doing it manually is bound to introduce the potential of mistakes. A few days ago, I came across the Rocket Scream Arduino firmware, and all that requires, well, is a cheap thermocouple, an LCD screen, and a relay, along with, of course, an Arduino. And I already had all of these bits in the shed, except for the thermocouple, and there are two you can choose from, the Max 6675 and the Max 31855, I think it is, but I went for the 6675 because, well, it was cheaper and I could source it locally. I've had to adjust the Rocket Scream script a little bit uh, because I'm using an I2C module on the back of this LCD. To help with this project, I've built this cable and box in the middle. So we've got a standard 13 amp plug on the left and a standard 13 amp British socket on the right. The earth and the neutral are continuous, but I'm about to cut this live wire here and put in the relay module. Now these relay modules are opto isolated. So the uh, high voltage AC side uh, of the relay is isolated from the low voltage DC side. So those wires that were connected earlier will go through this small hole in the side. The relay will go in there. We'll be able to control the live and I'll put a lid on it and hopefully that will be very safe. Now, using a mechanical relay probably isn't the best option, but like I mentioned earlier, I have this in the shed and I can use it for this purpose. It will be clicking, it's not ideal. Um, probably, if this works, I'll upgrade to a solid state relay in the future. You'll have to forgive the jumble of wires here, but uh, I've uh, got my relay in there in this, well, extension cord, I guess you might call it. Um, I remembered that these relay modules are active low. That means when you send a low signal to them, they come on. So I have connected the, uh, well, the live and uh, to the common and to the normally closed so that when this goes low, because this goes low straight away as soon as it boots up and then goes high to turn on the relay, this obviously needs to be the inverse. So uh, that has been wired up that way. 
We've got the thermocouple here and the LCD down in the bottom right hand side. So we should be able to see the um, temperature of the uh, thermocouple and we hopefully can hear the relay turn on and see an LED indicating that it has done. So let's power up the Arduino via USB. Uh, turn on there and we can see the splash screen on the reflow oven. Uh, the thermocouple reckons it's about 14 degrees here in the shed. I think that's probably a little bit optimistic. Uh, I think it's a bit cold than that. Um, and we can also see the relay LED. So that's saying it is on because it's getting a low signal from the Arduino. So being on actually means it's off. Okay, so it's that inverse. So that wire is working at the moment pressing one of these buttons on the Arduino starts the preheat down here on the screen. The relay has gone off, which means there is power now from the plug to the socket. Um, and of course the temperature is not going up because, well, it's not in an oven. So I think that's working. Do I dare plug the oven? in and give it a go yeah i think everything will be okay right so let me just show you what's going on here this extension lead here is plugged into an rcd so we've got mains here uh, going through the relay uh, to the socket which then connects to the oven okay um the arduino at the moment is not turned on we've got nothing on the screens no lights on the rcd so because of that and because this is using the uh, normally connected connections well there should be power to the oven so if i turn that on um, around there then yes we can see that indicator lamp on so yes that is working currently uh, the arduino is not doing anything so let's plug it in and power it up there we go that's powered now and we can see that the uh, temperature inside the oven is claiming to be quite high well i guess we just had the elements on didn't we yes we did uh, but now we should be able to control this oven with the uh, arduino here so let's go in here and press this button is that the right button yes it's now in preheat mode and uh, of course it's powered up the indicator light and we can now see the elements uh, illuminating in the oven amidst quite a bit of reflection so yeah that is working and we're up to 60 degrees apparently according to that little thermocouple in roughly the center of that oven 77 degrees and climbing and hopefully the uh, PID controller that's been implemented in the firmware will get the oven up to about 150 degrees and it will hold it there for a little bit so uh, let's see what happens at 150 pretty sure it's 150 i'd imagine we'll see the screen change and tell us it's in a different mode getting there now look and we can see the indicator and you might be able to hear the relay as we approach the uh 150 degrees and we're now in soak so you can see the indicator has now turned off the elements are off but it's periodically just turning them on so that it doesn't ramp up too quickly let's see if we can just catch that there we go indicator that's very clever so now it over that soak period i guess it'll get up to about 180 degrees inside the oven elements are on now in the soak 169 degrees and it's in the reflow stage <clears throat> so my solder should reflow at about 183 degrees, I think it is. 
but this will uh, take it above that um, that temperature something like 220 degrees for a short period of time uh, before then indicating that it's completed and at that point I should uh, open the oven door I guess Oh, but I've just noticed that time is about to run out. Ah! It did. So we may have lost a bit of heat for a moment. <clears throat> so the elements are still on. It still thinks it's flowing solder. Which, of course, there, it isn't because there's nothing in there, but... There we go, now we're in the cool stage. So as we're cooling, I will open up the uh, oven door. There was a little puff of smoke there. I guess that's the uh, thermocouple jacket just toasting itself slightly. And now it's cooling down rapidly. Ooh, I'm quite pleased that seemed to work. <clears throat> 